This is chapter 13. So uh, we've, we are getting about halfway through the book. So it's going very, very fast. So she cast a spell um, to um, remove the negativity uh, or the negative attitude in chapter 12. Chapter 13. The next morning, everyone who did badly on the tests how to go downstairs to the basement cl um, classes. We never went down here when we were breaking in our over the summer. So it's a surprise to see it now. The smell of mould is entirely gone. It's a surprise to see it now. The smell of mould is entirely gone. They've knocked down a wall so that there is just one big classroom now, airy and fresh and full of light. We have a new sixth year break room, which we still share with the girls in group one. You are still very much a year group, Harris uh, says in a speech that sounds suspiciously rehearsed. You'll still be relaxing and studying together, just like before. A brand new kettle and a microwave sit on the kitchen counter, waiting for their maiden voyage. They were once so desperately longed for that their presence now feels almost myth mythical. There's even a bookcase and a few armchairs to hang out in. A screen door opens to a little patio outside with steps leading to the street. I wonder if we can smoke out there. Is the first thing Rosin O'Mara um, says when she walks in after me. Two minutes later, another girl shows up and says the same thing. I can already tell that a lot of this term will be spent debating whether or not we are all allowed to smoke on the basement terrace. The debate intensifying as a few of the girls start turning 18. Upstairs, they are probably all talking about what kind of doctor they are going to be. The jokey is gone. Lily says suddenly behind me, it's an office. The classroom that the jokey was part of has become part of the locker uh, of the locker lined hallway and the jockey is itself has been extended into a small office. Lily and I saunter in and for a moment it's like we are back in the first year again. Slipping away and exploring the school always hopeful of mysteries. The office is cosy and lined with books. The desk is a heavy oak it doesn't look particularly official. It looks like mum's study, where she goes to mark papers. They've kept the shelves, I say, running my hand along the new book spines. So it's still kind of the jokey. Lily is already behind the desk, glancing at papers with no attempt to maintain secrecy. Heather Bangbury she reads slowly. Guide, dance, counts, counsellor. So guidance counsellor, but she splits it up. She might have dyslexia, who knows? Doesn't say here. I try to hide my shock. Lily's grades have never been great, but she always been a reader. She used to read big thick fancy novels, sometimes several, a month. Now she struggles to read Guidance Counselor. The river gave things to Lily, but it also washed things away. It deteriorated part of her original mind, severed, uh, severed pathways that were once clear. No wonder she hates me so much. I walk around to her side of the table and see that Heather Banbury guidance counsellor is plated in brass. What's with the engraved desk? Lily asks. 
Maybe she brought it from home. It is that normal? I don't know. I put my hand against the back wall where I can still feel the slight dampness of the foundations of the old house. There's a purplish line running like creases through a palm, a palm up from the skirts. I don't understand that. Running light, like creases through a palm up from the skirting boards and to the ceiling. Mold already breaking through the new paint. I talked to Fiona last night, Lily says. She's still mad. My stomach sinks. Fiona wouldn't even pick up the phone for me last night. I waited for Lily to deliver another robotic put-down. One of her icy observations of my character, it doesn't come. What did you say? I prodded. She shrugs. Nothing. Great, thanks. There are eleven other girls in our class, which I am surprised by. I always assumed other people have it together. There are quite a few girls who look a bit lonely and adrift. No one has a gang anymore. You can feel the prickling anxiety of the room. The sense of everyone knows they are low achievers in the school. Designed for high expectations, we've all known one another for years, but we are all suddenly embarrassed by one another. We are like those prisoners who all insist they are innocent, locked up for the wrong thing. This changes when our first class starts. For once, our English teacher, Miss March, isn't banging uh, on endlessly about Sylvia Plath. Instead, she hands us old exam papers. The place where 90% of you go wrong in the exams, she says, is in the wording of the question. We look at one another, startled by this switch in her tone. When an examiner asks you to show evidence of something that's all you need to do. If you are going to get through your exam, you need to first understand exactly what's being asked of you and exactly what is expected. That's how all our classes go. They've given up on trying to make us fall in love with school. This is about rewiring our brains so that we are good at exams and I can already tell that most of us are finding it a refreshing change. At lunch we wait for Fiona in the sixth year break room. All the other girls come downstairs but Fiona doesn't. I thought that was good, I say to Lily, stirring my instant hot chocolate. It's a bit gross made with hot water, not milk, but it's still a bit of a thrill to make it in school. The classes, I mean, more straightforward. She shrugs and looks into her own mug of hot water. Are you going to put a tea bag in it or, or not? Her eyes flicker mischievously to me, inviting me to gaze into her cup. Inside, she is creating a very small firework display, tiny sparks, the size of gnats or nets, gnats, dance across the surface of the water, the steam catching them mid-hover. I catch my breath, as astonished by the electricity or the electric beauty made miniature. You shouldn't do that in school, I whisper. You'll get caught, she shrugs, and the sparks fall into the water, drowning instantly. Luckily, everyone seems to be busy reuniting with their friends to notice. Hello, girls, comes a soft voice, and I jump instinctively, moving in front of Lily so she is not seen. 
It is Heather Bambury. Hey, uh, Miss Bambury, I say, how are you? It's quite weird to ask a teacher how they are. I realise I have never asked Miss Harris how she is. Yeah, um, fine, she smiles gratefully. Getting on, you know. I've been talking to the third years all day, already stressing about their junior certificate. It's so hard to tell them to relax without spe specifically saying this literally does not matter. I laugh remembering how serious everyone got during the junior certificate and how stupid that all seems now. I hope um, I hope the leaving is like that. Like, as soon as it's done, we'll all realise what an insane fuss over nothing it was. Believe me, she responds, leaning in conspiratorially. Sp sp you will. You know what I got in my leaving? Lily and I look at and I look at each other amazed that a teacher would talk like that and like this to us. Well, not a teacher, but still what uh, we both ask. She bites her lip, lowers her head, slightly not attracted, attract the attention of other girls. Twenty-five. Two twenty-five. Wow, I'm genuinely shocked. I don't know anyone who has scored that low. But then again, all my siblings were in the 500s. Could you get into college? I did, and a technical course, which I actually really enjoyed, on jewellery designing. She says happily. She starts fiddling with an opal ring on her finger. And did you become a jeweler designer? Jewelry designer? No, she says, just as, sun, uh, as sunny. But I got a really weird job, cataloging estate sales. You know, calculating the worth of dead people's jewelry, writing little sales pictures for the auction house. It was fun. I met lots of like-minded uh, and weird old eccentric people. Wow, I say again and then feel embarrassed because I'm repeating myself. I've never even heard of a job like that. Yeah, she shrugs. I've had loads of those weird little jobs. To be honest, then I was a buyer trying to find unusual stones. So I lived in India for a few years. This is utterly amazing to me. Quite frankly, I had no idea you could do so much with so few qualifications. And what was that like? I asked, unable to hide my curiosity. India? It was fun. I was travelling around uh, a lot, so I sometimes got a bit lonely. But I did an online course in textiles, and I met a lot of cool people along the way. Then... I got into yoga while I was out there, a sort of meditation in general, which led me into counselling. God, she stops, laugh, laughs at herself. There's my life story for you. I guess the lunch bell go. I guess the lunch bell goes. Sorry, she says, looking a bit sheepish. I shouldn't have taken up your lunch break. Blithering on. No, 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 I replied. We were really interested, weren't we, Lil? Lily has gone back to playing with her water and is showing no interest whatsoever. I would really love to learn more about, like, I don't know, how you find cool jobs like that. Luck, mostly, she laughs. Well, listen, you've got detention this Friday, don't you? I'm supervising you. We can talk about more then, if you like. 
for the first time in days, I don't feel so heavy, so broken down with worry and hopelessness. Maybe it's the spell I did in the bathroom. I just talking to someone um, who doesn't treat education like a be all and end all. But I feel cheerful and I have to give a little bit of my own worth. I agree. It is you inside that makes you and that you can take the control back and follow the path that you really are trying to find and want. So I love this. That's why I like these books. Jolly, we say goodbye to her and head to our first class. And I feel so brave that I loop my arm through Lily's. We walk into the class with our arms linked like we used to do hundreds of years ago. Fiona's mood doesn't even, does eventually thaw, partly because she's not the sort of person who can easily hold a grudge, and partly because school becomes so strange that she can't resi resist talking to us about it. Have you seen them? She explodes one day when Lily and I are sitting in the break room. The pin, the pins. I instantly know what she's talking about. I've noticed them too, without necessarily thinking to question them. Some of the younger girls have started wearing tiny gold pins on their skirts, collars, in the shape of two circles intersecting like the Olympic rings, with three of them missing what are they? I asked. Some kind of charity thing. Charity of bullshit, she says so loudly that two girls move to the end of the room, glaring at us as they go. It's for abstin ab abstinence, abstinence, abstaining. All right. I can't. Some, I have dyslexia, so now you know. Wearing it is like this promise to not have sex before marriage. Jeez, Jesus Christ. Sorry, I, I. it's in the book, so I'm sorry. I don't like using his name in vain. So I'll call it Jesus or G, okay? I say, sh shaking my head. So they are wedding rings. Well, yeah, exactly. Fiona flops down and crosses her arms. Can you believe this? Apparently those COB boys, cob boys, are holding after school clubs and people are going, like of their own free will, and getting these pins. Maybe some people don't want to do it before marriage, Lily says, docile. At this time, at this rate, I'll be married before I get to my, to do anything Again, I grumble. My parents are holding fast on the grounding. I'm just going to stop here because it's 18 minutes. So it's too long to load up. I'll see you in the next thing episode.